Member Kaspers now. Mr. Speaker, I want to lend my voice to the support of this resolution which seeks to approve or grant permission to the Minister for Finance to borrow an amount of 50 million US dollars for some very pertinent areas in our social and economic landscape of St. Lucia. US $42 million for road improvement and maintenance. US $4 million for infrastructure repairs to schools and US $4 million to finance the housing development program here in St. Lucia. I believe every parliamentarian here in this Honorable House has much interest in all of those areas. In fact, one particular area I often say to my officials that every St. Lucian reacts to every day he or she sets out of their home is that of roads. Whether you're driving or you're walking, first step or the first rule you impact the road, and whether it's good or bad, you respond to that situation. So every single St. Lucian would normally comment on road conditions. And therefore, I'm not in any way surprised by some of the comments coming from various parliamentarians, whether those who have indicated that I've given them some level of assurance of my attention an intervention on some of the situations existing in their constituencies, or those who may not have the hope or the confidence that all of their roads will be taken care of, like my dear friend from Denry North, and of course for the inquiring minds of Castry South as to what is happening in Castry South, even if it may not have anything to do with the Ministry of Infrastructure. The fact is, the Ministry of Infrastructure is committed to attempting, attempting to uh, um, deal with every kilometer of road in this country. And to do this, we understand one very basic principle, Mr. Speaker, and that is the road infrastructure which presently exists, if we cannot maintain it, then it doesn't make sense building new infrastructure. So my primary objective is to maintain the existing infrastructure in St. Lucia. And so I'm sure we have seen an even more aggressive effort being made in attempting to maintain the little that we have or what is existing now by responding as much in a, a very efficient manner in dealing with the potholes which emerge very often on our roads throughout the country. In fact, in many instances, notwithstanding the efforts of successive governments to introduce um, measures to deal with uh, road improvement, and if you notice, in A, the $42 million refers to road improvement and maintenance program phase four, which means to say, prior to this initiative, there have been three initiatives undertaken by government in former years to address roads throughout the country in various zones. And therefore, what this says is that the journey to Bringing, up, bringing our road network to a, an A-class is a very long journey. St. Lucia has 700 kilometers of road, paved road in St. Lucia, 700 kilometers of paved road. Out of that, 152 kilometers comprise, 
primary roads, 122 kilometers secondary, making it a total of 277 kilometers of primary and secondary road network. There is 423 kilometers of tertiary roads in St. Lucia, meaning roads beyond secondary and primary, which encompasses community roads, and in some instances, most instances, also encompasses feeder roads, including feeder agriculture roads. When we consider, Mr. Speaker, what is being presented here for consideration, which is $42 million US, when you weigh this against what the Ministry of Infrastructure believes that we need in the next four years to address the road conditions in St. Lucia, we believe that $450 million will be required to address the road situation in St. Lucia. $450 million over a period of four years. So you work this out and you realize that U.S. $42 million, which equates to $114 million, is only 25%. So we're really not anywhere near returning our road network to an A-class situation whereby we can talk of having an excellent infrastructure, road infrastructure in St. Lucia. So this injection of $42 million in our road network is very welcoming and will help in addressing some of the situations. So for this, our primary focus is on the primary and secondary road network. And I'm hoping that at some stage, once we have completed the, the final list of roads that I can share with members, so that they can see the full composition which the Prime Minister has highlighted of the various primary roads, meaning A class, and secondary roads in the B class to be undertaken through this loan program. But Mr. Speaker, reconstructing, um, redeveloping, and, and um, uh, rehabilitating roads in the country must be followed by a regime of maintenance. And that is why maintenance is so important. If you build a road today, reconstruct a road, and believe that the life expectancy, which is a term used in health, <laughs> is 20 years, you may very well lose that road in 10 years. Because invariably, there are occasions when roads are built without any proper drainage systems. So you just leave open um, earthen drains, and then it is not maintained. There are times when the road simply just deteriorates at an, a much faster rate because of the quality of material used on those roads. So to avoid that situation, the intention is once we have reconstructed, rehabilitated the road network which we are speaking about, a road maintenance system and bridge maintenance system which we have just introduced which deals with the collection of data and assessment of the road pavement and the, the, um, the, um, the pavement strength, which will help in determine, determining the life of the road, will help us to keep that road going and to stretch the life expectancy of the road. So for example, if a road is built today the maintenance program, the preventative maintenance program was set in the day after in terms of inspections, testings, and of course informing us in our planning and uh, intervention to keep that road going. So no road should simply last the time, the, 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 the life that it was originally built on, but the intention is through that, such inspections and maintenance in, interventions that we can stretch the expectancy of the road beyond the established life set when construction is done. 
Now, we understand that, of course, we need to spend as much as possible to improve on the road network. We understand that we need to maintain existing road, and you would have seen in a number of situations where we have seen that the road pavement is fatigued sufficiently to warrant abandonment of potholing and to go in and make that intervention that will extend the life and stop wasting money. So in a number of cases along the Badlil, we realized that the road pavement, a section of that road pavement was very fat fatigued and we moved in, um, cut off a major portion of it and reconstructed it and that has stabilized now for a little while so there's no potholing taking place because the road has a greater life. On, along the Mongeau Hill, we also did the same thing, and in some other areas you'd notice, even where we have seen a lot of potholing along the Larry Seuss Lakai stretch, Lakai stretch, you'd notice in some instances we have gone in and taken those in, um, made those interventions merely to extend the life of that road while we prepare for major rehabilitation. This year, or rather next year, we are hoping that in addition to the 42 million US dollars which we'll spend on all of the roads there, that we'll receive a tremendous amount of help from the UK government under the United Kingdom Caribbean Infrastructure Fund, UKCIF, UKCIF. The UK government, even at the time of the former administration, offered the entire Caribbean assistance in improving infrastructure. The then administration thought that probably the best investment would be in the North-South Link Road. Upon realizing the cost of the North, the predicted cost of the North-South Link Road of $1.6 billion, we felt that $30 million, which the British government was offering St. Lucia, would be lost in that project. And the timeline that was given to spend that money it would be better spent otherwise. So we looked at a number of areas, how can we invest this, this money? And thought that the best investment and the quickest investment based on the conditions set um, for that money would be to rehabilitate the Millennium Highway, which was constructed, um, co construction was completed in 1998-99, or rather, 19, yes, 1998-99, when it was opened. That road is fatigued and now needs reconstruction. As we speak now in this year's budget, an allocation of $500,000 is made to simply maintain that road. And if you, if, you, if you monitor what's happening on that road, it's every other week we're on the road potholing. Every other week we're on the road potholing, it means we need to just reconstruct the road. So we are now in the process of completing all of, the, all of the requirements necessary in terms of consultancies, designs, etc., etc. The fund is being managed by the Caribbean Development Bank, and we're hoping that in the first half of next year, we should be able to commence construction, reconstruction of the Millennium Highway. In addition to this, we will also be addressing the West Coast Road from the Millennium Highway junction onto the West Coast, into Sofre, and addressing a number of um, areas of deficiency and shortcomings on that West Coast Road, both the Millennium and West Coast Road. The project entails not just the reconstruction, redesign, and reconstruction of the roads, but also to look at issues of drainage, which I think the member for Castro South raised, the issue of road safety, which will be a road safety initiative not only for the Millennium and West Coast Road, but a national road safety program to address the issue of road safety. And for me, Mr. Speaker, and the Ministry of Infrastructure, road safety forms a very important element in our road infrastructure. You would notice, Mr. Speaker, that in recent times, we have commenced a program of installing um, crash barriers along the Cassidy's waterfront, along the Fuasho area, in canneries near the point where Jenny, um, the former Calypsonian, young Calypsonian died, 
and we're looking at a number of dangerous areas, treacherous areas, where we believe we must install road of uh, those crash barriers. The parliamentary representative for Castry South has already written, and I must commend him on, on, on his um, recognition and appreciation for the initiative that we have undertaken. But that is an initiative that we'll continue to undertake to ensure that at least our roads are not simply built and left open to, to the detriment of lives, but that the road is forgiving. So that if you run off the road, that you hit a crash barrier, you are forgiven for having fallen asleep or having somehow got misled and to crash into an area to save lives one way or the other. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, the British will assist us in a further assessment of road safety. The ministry has committed itself to ensuring that there are three things we must keep in stock. One are Bailey Bridges, because Bailey Bridges come in very handy in times of disaster. And again, we have kept in stock a number of Bailey Bridges over the years. This year, or last year rather, when Dominica was affected, we were able to assist Dominica with a number of Bailey Bridges. And I must commend Dominica for having returned those bridges to put in our stock. The second thing we must maintain, Mr. Speaker, is Gabion baskets. Because in a number of situations, we have roads which are collapsing. We have had in, is it Deramo? We've had in, of course, we spoke about the one in T. Roche. We have one at Bacatel. But in some instances, some of those slides can be easily dealt with and to at least avoid further deterioration if only we have Gabion baskets in stock that we can install. The next one we will keep in stock, uh, a stock of, 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 of such uh, equipment or, or furniture, is that of the guardrails, the crash barriers, so that a stock of the, this will be kept so that our road safety unit can move around and to install those guardrails throughout the country. But Mr. Speaker, more than this is to ensure that if we are serious about road maintenance and we, if we are to demonstrate responsibility and efficiency and to be able to carry out the necessary interventions in a timely manner, the ministry must be ready, must be programmed and equipped to do so. Hence the reason why last year, Mr. Speaker, in, the, in our budget, we made a request to the Minister for Finance to fund a consultancy costing $3.5 million, a road maintenance management and bridge maintenance management project, which allows us to do a comprehensive assessment and analysis of our road infrastructure. It takes into, it takes into consideration the last one was abandoned. But this one, we have taken it very seriously. We have been able to assess every kilometer of road on this country, every single one. Hence the reason why I can give you the total number of kilometers in St. Lucia, primary, secondary, tertiary, agricultural roads, feeder roads, you just name it. The, to test those roads by using what is called a deflector meter, which can tell you the pavement strength and the life of, of the pavement, and to use the information generated out of that testing to help us program and plan for our road infrastructure development. It is hoped, Mr. Speaker, that with this, it will inform us in our planning and our budgeting, and so for the ministry to be able to stay on top of the situation and to respond to any event that presents itself. I want to assure, in that regard, to assure the member for Cassius South that I've heard of the situation at Bar Saint Joseph. We have done some work there before, but it obviously means that we need to have a much greater intervention. Definitely Marigo, I was there on Sunday after an event which I attended, and um, it was in Cassius South. <laughs> Um, and I've seen the condition of the, of the road going down to um, Capella 
Uh, and so because of the historical significance of Marigot, I believe we need to pay attention. The question of drainage is indeed a critical component of road infrastructure. If you build roads without proper drains, then it means you, you have the recipe for disaster and certainly for, for um, spending over and above what is required. So these certainly will be addressed. Now, I do know that ministers and parliamentarians generally are interested in their roads. I'm interested in mine. And so the roads mentioned by the Prime Minister are the roads in the second, primary and secondary um, um, category. However, the Ministry of Infrastructure has developed, has developed a, a list of other roads not listed in the secondary and primary roads. Those are the tertiary roads. It is hoped that outside of the 42 million US, which is already dedicated to the primary and secondary road network, that considering the fact that the government is given a five-year moratorium, moratorium, that the government will now be able, during that five-year period, to use the annual estimated revenue of 30 million to address some of those um, tertiary roads. So we have captured all of those roads, including Bas Saint Joseph and Marigot, that under that other um, revenue stream that we'll be able to attend to. And again, once we complete that entire list, I will share it with members. And if there are any roads not captured, which I doubt you'll find any, not captured, that we will be prepared to put on the list and for consideration at an um, at a date that is um, financially convenient. The whole intention is to ensure that we maintain a dashboard of all of our roads in St. Lucia and to be able to program those roads so that we have a very proactive response in dealing with the road situation in St. Lucia. I'm looking forward to the benefits of the 42 million US dollars and to ensure that in the execution of those roads, in the implementation of those roads, that procurement, expenditure, and management of the resources is done in a very transparent way, and that opportunities are given to local contractors to participate and to deliver onto our people the very best which I believe is necessary to the general population. I want to move quickly on to housing, and I again would like to commend the initiative of allocating 4 million out of the 50 million US to housing, which I believe will go, it's a little bit, not much, but I hope it will have some kind of impact. And to join both the parliamentary representative of Castro Central and Castro South, that whatever can be done to assist persons particularly with no income, and oftentimes we speak of low-cost housing and low-income housing, at the end of the day, those who are most desperate are those with no income. And many times, those individuals really cannot face a banking institution, cannot face a banking institution because they do not have an income. They are casual workers. They work hand to mouth. They work based on job, bounce and draw. But yet still, those people sometimes are the best, how we call it, paymasters. They are the ones who understand what it is to owe and to go and pay the money for what they have taken. So it is my hope that we will devise a program on the housing utilizing some of the local culture, the Kudme culture, because again, in many instances, I have seen homes started with pallets, started with pallets as a little shack. And over time, you'd, all of a sudden you see before you a, a concrete structure, well-built, because those persons on a weekly basis save money 
buy the sand, buy the stones, and eventually get the cement and start building. We have to give them an opportunity. We have to give them an opportunity whereby the major component in home construction, which is the land, is so costly that by the time they have purchased the land, they cannot build a house on the land. So we must give them the opportunity of being able to lease with an option to purchase and to allow them to build their own home, utilizing their sweat labor as an injection of what I consider to be the equity in that house. But it is an initiative that we as a parliament must sit together, maybe through bipartisanship, and to see how we can come up with an initiative to deal with a situation that affects all of us. There are no boundaries. It is not one which affects labor and does not affect UWP. It is one that affects everybody. And I would like to, at some stage, hope that we can present this and to participate in, in that process. Mr. Speaker, I want to just in passing say that on, in housing, we've had the situation in Leclerc where we have, we have demolished the, the Leclerc housing estate. And uh, Cabinet this week was able to finally approve the relocation, the, the, what I should say, alternative location for a number of the residents who occupied lands and who accepted the offer or the package given to them, but who are unfortunate in finding um, available lands to relocate. Government has been able to identify lands within the Castries North constituency. And those lands will be made available to those who are still in need to be able to um, reconstruct their home based on the assistance given to them and to, be, and to move in comfortable surroundings that I am sure they very much will be happy. Out of the 41 households who um, occupied the estate and an additional 15 or so who occupied the lands, uh, there are about 12 who have requested assistance and they will be given first choice to um, occupy those lands um, a plot of some 6.7 acres which will be subdivided and made available to those persons on special terms and conditions as established by the government. I want to also commend the, the um, Prime Minister, Minister for Finance for the consideration of our schools. Our schools, many of which are more than 40 years, 30, um, 50 years, some of them are deteriorating at a rate. And I believe this initiative, as far as it can reach, will certainly help our children, some of whom operate in very, very poor conditions. In, and I know in all constituencies, bar none, there are some good schools, good facilities, and there's some very bad schools with very bad um, facilities. So Mr. Speaker, once again, I support this resolution and I look forward to the benefits as we move forward in the new year. I thank you.